Welcome to Cujo Sound. This is Unity and Wise Integration. Welcome back to another session here at Cujo Sound, and this is the Wise and Unity Integration stuff. We are going today just to simply have one sound located somewhere, and I'll show you some good practice about it, and we can walk around and we'll explain the differences between 2D and 3D sounds and how we can use that from both Wise and Unity. So we have our project here, and our player is located here, as you can see. And whenever he walks about, there are these nice little barrels here that make some fire. What we're going to do is that we are going to be creating a tool script that we can use on all these barrels or any other object. It will automatically load the sound, place a 3D emitter on it, and it'll work, and we can in wise control its attenuation. Let's get to that. So a good smart way of doing this is to simply create a tool that you can reuse. So we are going to first create an empty game object added to this prefab here by creating a prefab of, of its own so that we have now this tool is a prefab so we can drag and drop it onto any object. So let's do that. First, we create an empty game object and let's call it, I always call my wise objects something with WW. Let's see here, wise audio emitter like that. In that case, we always know what this thing does. Down here in our project, we can, under assets, create a folder, which we can then use, and we can call it audio tools. In that way, we can place all our things in there. This audio emitter, drag and drop it here. It now becomes a prefab that you can always use. We are going to be creating this tool, and what we're going to do is that over here in our new emitter prefab wise audio emitter thing, we are going to add a script. And we are going to call it the I, I usually call my scripts when they are something with Y's. I call them WW audio emitter script. I could spell script there. Our audio emitter script. Here we have our script. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. Here we have with Visual Studio. If you are new to coding then or scripting, then perhaps you should check out the Unity videos that I did before for non-coders. This is the same approach. We are only interested in how we can make this work. We are not interested in necessarily hardcore code or anything like that. So what I want, and let's just, just point it out here. I want a sound event that can play something in WISE with a 3D attenuation from the object that we are looking at. And the object in particular is this fire barrel here. And we are going to do this. This is in case the sound is static on an object that cannot move. Um, so we are going to make sure that it will be modifiable in terms of which event can play what. So let's start by creating some strings up here where we can say that this is our event. So if you make a public string, and let's call it the event name, and let's just give it a standard name as in default, because in that way we can always change it later. When you make something public, it appears in Unity over in the inspector window. We'll get to that in a moment when we have added these. So public string stop event, And these here are the two events that we are going to need. Whenever we get close to the object, we want the sound to play. And when we get away from the object, we want the sound to stop. There are several ways to start and stop an event in WISE by having it automated. You don't necessarily need an event to do it, and you don't necessarily need an event to stop it. But that's how we are going to do it, because then we can control the parameters of how it does so. You can, though, in code, have this call here called stop playing ID. And stop playing ID means that the identification number that whatever object you have, if a sound is playing on that ID, you can make that specific instance stop. But that's not what we are going to do. We are going to do it 
the other way by having a stop event. And we'll get to that once we get back over into WISE. The first thing that we got to do is that we've got to make sure that WISE understands that this here is a sound object that we can use. You can leave this part out and then WISE will automatically do it for you, but I found that it works better if we do it. So the first thing that we do is that we say AK Sound Engine, and that is everything that has to do with Audio Kinetic WISE. Audio Kinetic is the company that makes WISE, in case you didn't know. So we say here, register game object and parenthesis, and we write game object. So now this game object that we are dealing with in here in Unity, this specific game object with the WISE script attached to it will become a game object that we can use in WISE. As you can see, actually, all, both our event names are already here. So we want it to be so that this sound only plays, it starts and stops whenever we are within a given radius of the sound. So let's add a component here and say that we want a sphere collider. We set it to be a trigger because else it's simply just a wall of, if it's not set to trigger, you cannot walk through it. And we probably want it to be 20 meters. Yeah. As you can see, you can press F and always zoom in on an object in case you can't find it once you have selected it over here. So imagine we have this sphere here around this center of our item here. Whenever we are inside this sphere, we want the sound to play. And whenever we're outside of it, we want the sound to stop playing. Actually, let's put this to 25 meters here and make this window smaller so that it's easier to see. If you watch my other Unity videos, you will know that we can create in the code, in the script, say that on the trigger of enter this and on the trigger of exit this collider here, we can do various things. And that's exactly what we're going to do. When you have a collider like that, we would also like to have some sort of value that detects are we inside it or are we not inside it. So we make a private bool value. A boolean value is a value that can only be true or false, one or zero, or something like yes and no, something like that is in collider equals false. Let's just, that's just the standard what we're going to do. It's going to be false to begin with. When something is private, it does not appear over here in our inspector window, which is quite a useful thing to know because we need to change stuff over here once in a while. And we don't want to change this value because the script will automatically do it for us. Good. When you make a void like this, this is basically a function. This is something that runs whenever something happens. And Unity knows that when you enter a collider, a void is being called, called untrigger enter. And it automatically generates this for us. The void on trigger enter, whenever we enter the collider on this game object with whatever is called other, then something happens. So whenever we enter this collider now, whatever we write in between these two curly brackets will happen. So we want basically to say AK sound engine dot post event. And then our event name, comma, game object. We wanted to play on this specific game object. How does this work? Well, let's check this out. So we are going to take a sound and drag and drop it into this default work unit here and have it play through an event over here that we trigger in the code that we just made in Unity. So we know that this is a fire barrel and it's a 3D sound. So let's create a work unit. This is good practice so that we make sure that all our sounds are in the same work unit when they are 3D. So this here is a 3D SFX work unit. And inside it, we are going to be creating an actor mixer called fire barrel. In that case, we can place all our fire barrel variations in this mixer. As you see here, this here is the settings for this specific fire barrel mixer. I have a folder here with some sounds that I've gathered for this project. We drag and drop our fireplace audio file into here. As you can see, it locates it in a specific folder, originals SFX, which is fine. But you might want to keep track of where you place all these because you might want to have separate folders for footsteps and other things. So. 
Have in mind that your hierarchy within the originals folder is also quite important. Good. So now we have a fire barrel sound here. We can press play. Or we can press space. And then it works. Good. This sound here, it's quite long, so we can... This is actually bad practice. You should, of course, only add sounds that is that are the length that you need. But you can double-click this SFX here, little tiny little icon here, and this window here will show up. And as you can see, this is a one-minute file, and we don't want that. We just want, I guess... I guess we only want a couple of seconds that we can use. So, in this sound here, we want it to loop, which it does, and positioning. Our fire barrels, as you can see here, we can't change anything, but that's because it's a child of this mixer here, which means that we can set some settings on this mixer here, and then all the children, whatever many variations we have under this, will be affected in the way that we set it here. That also means that we can always click our fire barrel and say override parent and then do whatever we want. Now, we are going to be creating some generic attenuations here. So let's say we want it to be spatialized by our position. Attenuation, new, and let's just call it ATT for attenuation so that we know that this is an attenuation file. Let's call it generic 25 meters. We can then click edit, and here we have our attenuation. So if we press play and drag this, you will be able to hear a lot how it sounds when we are moving away from the object. We set the attenuation to 25 meters. So whenever we are moving away from this object, we can sort of simulate how it will sound in our game world. And that's... That's not always the best solution just to have a fade like this. So let's add a low pass filter like this. And a really, really smart way is to have over a certain distance, have it fade down to a certain level, but then have that level continue for much longer than the others. So let's say that if we are within five meters, we want it to be full volume. But if we are at 15 meters, we want it to be much lower. That means that if we're 25 meters away from this sound, we will be able to hear it like this. And as we approach the object, it will play like this. So, if we go down here and say spread, if you've watched my videos on vampire, then you will also know what this means. Spread is simply to avoid panning, excessive panning, because if you don't have any spread, then think of it like this. If you're... If you are walking around an item, an object, then it will pan this excessively. And that's not always nice to have. So it's always good to have a little bit of spread here, just within, let's say, the first five meters. It doesn't have to be at 100%. It can only be at, let's say, 50 within five meters. It's still 50. And when we are 10 meters away, it is zero. In that way, when we are far away from the sound, it'll sound like this and it'll come from a very, very specific direction. But once we are within 10 meters of the sound, it will not pan as excessively. See, it's not panning as much. So, we have spread, output, and low pass filter here. So let's create an event that we can use. Now, an event cannot start with a number. So we're going to be creating an empty event. We'll just call this SFX 3D Fire Barrel. We drag and drop our sound into it. So now, 
we press play on our event here, this should play. I always, when I have a sound that loops like this, I add a second event to the event and then say seek, seek, there we go. And I tell it to seek randomly, you set it to 50% and then click this little tennis ball here. And this is all relative to the number that you set here. So let's say minus 40 to 40. So now whenever we press play on this event, it'll start at a random given point in the sound file so that in case you have several next to each other, they will not phase, they will not have other kinds of problems by phasing and panning and other things when they're playing on top of each other. So. I don't know if you can hear, but it's not starting at the same time, which is good. Let's also say here that whenever it starts, we want a fade in time of one second. Just keep it nice and smooth. Now we are also going to be creating a stop event. We call it the same thing. Just name it stop. Click the event, remove our seek because I duplicated them and just select stop instead of that. And we want a fade out time of one second. So whenever this sound is playing, if this event is called while this sound here is playing, it will simply stop this sound. Now, let's go back into Unity and make sure that this works here. So here we have our wise audio emitter object that we created with our custom script and other things here. We set the attenuation to 25 meters, which is also why we've set our sphere collider to be 25 meters. We know that over here in WISE, our event names are fire barrel and fire barrel stop. So if we build the sound bank now, we should be able to find this event in Unity. If we press F7, right click, generate for all platforms, and that's it. This event name here, it does not, we cannot select it from any sort of list, but we can go down into our wise picker here and under events, default work unit. In our default work unit, we have 3D fire barrel and we cannot drag and drop it here, which is the smart part of the wise picker if you're using this differently, but we are not, we are only dealing with strings. So we have to write the name manually over here. So our event is called SFX, and this is um, case sensitive, by the way, fire barrel. And the stop event is 3D fire barrel underscore stop. So let's go into our script and make sure that this works. Whenever we have written something here or changed any of the values in the public areas of this inspector window, it always overwrites what's in the code. So the reason why we wrote default before is that then we make sure that we change it. And then we know that we have this thing that now works. So let's go into the code here. In our code, whenever we enter this collider, we want the sound to play. We want the sound to play. And we also want our is in collider to become true. And why do we want that? We want that because we want to control that if it's not the player or if we have, if for some reason have gone out of the collider without having it register, then we cannot enter it again and the sound will trigger twice. So if, and that's where this other thing comes into play, because we can say if other, which is what is colliding with the collider, if the tag is not equal to player or and this is the or symbol it's a little stupid i don't really get it as a coder but this is an or symbol and you always write two of them next to each other or if is in collider and this is if you write a boolean value like this it always checks is this true if you write with an asterisk in front it checks is this false so if it's something else than the player, or if we already are inside the collider, this does not trigger. We tell it so by adding curly brackets here and say return. 
This means that when this code is executed, if it's not the player or if we're already inside the collider, we get to return and poof. Zoom in a little here. This code is never executed. If isn't collider is false, then we make sure that isn't collider becomes true so that this can never happen twice. Our AK sound engine plays this event and that's it. So we want to also make sure that if we are leaving the collider, we say void on trigger exit. And it works exactly the same way that we can copy paste this. But in this case, we want to make sure that we are not in the collider here so that if it's not the player and if we are not inside the collider, when we leave it, it doesn't execute this code. So here we say AK sound engine dot post event stop event, which is what we named in the inspector window and game object like that. And because we are now outside of the collider is in collider becomes false. In that way, this can never be triggered twice. This up here can never be triggered twice. And that's how it works. We also need to make sure that if we are starting inside this collider, there is another call called void on trigger stay. On trigger stay is if you're inside the collider, simply. So we can paste this here as well. And if it's something else, then the player that is already in the collider, and if we are registered as being in the collider, then do nothing. But if we are suddenly inside the collider, then this in collider becomes true. And our AK sound engine dot post event happens again. Event name, comma, game object. There we go. So now, if we enter the collider, the sound plays. If we exit the collider, the sound stops. If we start inside this collider, the sound also plays. But it cannot be triggered twice. So how do we check if this works? Well, let's go into Unity here. And in Unity, we now have our event here. We save this. And this is a prefab on its own. We can drag and drop this prefab onto here. Click Fire and say apply. That means that now this prefab is within this prefab so that now we only need we only need to worry about this item that plays a sound. We don't need to care about this fire thing anymore. We can just if we need to change something in the code, click our wise audio emitter and it'll have all these things and we can replace those if we want. We don't have to worry about this fire prefab anymore cuz we're not touching it. So now, this item here should be located in 0, 0, 0. When it does so, when an item is located in 0, 0, 0, it is relative to the location of the top object here in the hierarchy. So, click fire, press F. Here we are. This here is our sound. It plays from here, and it plays within 25 meters. Now, it's important to know this component here in our prefab needs a AK game object, else it won't work. And we go to our third person controller here, and over here on our camera, there is already a listener, which is very, very important because we need that. But let's try and press play and see what happens. It's working. And this one over here is not playing. And why is that? That is because we have not updated our prefab, because these are two instances of the same thing. But as you can see, it's working quite well. And we can walk away from the sound. You can hear it quite far away. If you press escape, you can use the mouse again to control it. So if we click here, on this here, you can now see where the collider is, and you can see the camera where we are. So as you hear here, the sound is playing from the item. When we leave the collider, as you can see here, 
well, you can't really see it, but as we do, this sound actually stops playing because it triggers the stop event that we have. We can also check that by going into WISE and up here, click connect, that we want to connect to our project. Press F6, and then you can see the fireplace sound here is working. Now what we can do is that we can double click it and then edit the sound, which means that you can now run around your environment and then, oh, it needs to be a little lower or it needs to be a little louder. Let's put it like at minus six. Yeah, that works better. Now I'm running around in the editor and you can see the window over here. Once we leave this collider, you should see the event come in. Event triggered, fade completed, the sound has stopped. Once we enter the collider again, we should see an event come in and the event has started. And there we have it. Now it works like that. So now let's make sure that it works on both of these fire barrels. So let's find the fire barrel here in our view. Here. The fire barrel is here. We update it. What about the other fire barrel? Why isn't that working? Well, we can click it and see it here. See, it also has an emitter here. That's the same thing, the same radius, and everything like that. So now, when we press play, the sound should work on both of these. And that's how you place a sound on a 3D item by automatically generating the game item ID so that we don't have to worry about that. And it starts and stops whenever we enter or exit the collider. And that's how you do things over on the Y side. You create a basic event for starting and stopping. And you have your sound over here. And you can always control it by changing its positioning and other things and make sure that it works like that. This was a very brief video on how to place a 3D item on the scene and how to make prefabs and so on. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching Kujo Sound. If you want to know more about game audio, Unity, and Wise integrations, please like this video if you enjoyed it, and hit subscribe if you want to know more. Or head over to patreon.com forward slash Kujo Sound, where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel and the time I take off to create all this material. I would really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Kujo Sound and Bjorn Jacobson signing out.